We're excited to have you back on Woodworking with Wes today. We've been promising you that we would do a video on finish and today's the day. We have three doors that we're going to take through our finish shop. This is an alder door that we're going to do a stain and glaze. This is a paint grade door and I'm going to show you the material we use for that. This is a mahogany drawer face that we're doing for a job site and we're going to show you the stain that we use for that. And so we'll talk a little bit about each one of these. This alder door is a door that we actually did on a video. Um, we had a customer who wanted a miter door because of the, the fancy profile. And we did a stain and glaze finish. The stain that we use is Sherwood wiping stain. And we put the stain on, then we'll seal and we'll just do a black glaze over it. But I like Sherwood wiping stain. It's a very good stain. And for my, most of my stains, I use Sherwood. Sherwin Williams. For my paint grade, I always make my panels out of MDF because it doesn't shrink, expand, or contract, and it makes a great finish for paint. My style and rails, on this one I used poplar, and you can use either poplar or soft maple for your uh, style and rails when you do a paint grade door. For my paint, I, have used, I use a tinted vinyl sealer. Now, this is uh, ML Campbell. I get it from my hardware supplier, and they can mix to uh, fit the color that I'm after. So I get a tinted vinyl sealer. And what I do is I spray three or four coats, depending on what it takes to get the coverage that I'm after. I sand between each coat until I get the perfect color and the perfect finish. And then I spray two coats of clear top coat over it and I get a beautiful finish on my paint grade doors. And we're going to go do that all the way through and show you how we do that. On our mahogany door that we're doing, we're using just a Minwax red chestnut stain because it matched. This, this uh, cabinet that we're doing is a buffet piece that goes with an antique table. We had to match a color and the match of the color was best made, made with this Minwax stain. And so we're just going to do a stain and lacquer finish on this, but we're gonna show you that also. So we're gonna take all of these over to the paint shop. We're going to go through each door and show you how we finish and how we do it. And, and uh, so that you can see how I do my finishes. Everybody's kind of got their own deal, but we'll show you everything that we do on when I do my finishes, and then you can have an idea of how we do our finish. We're in the paint shop. We're going to stain our alder door with our Sherwood wiping stain. I use a sponge, uh, a stain applicator sponge. I buy these from uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, you can get them at most any paint store, but I have found that the ones from Harbor Freight are the best. I like them. So anyway, what we do is we just dip our staining sponge in, and we'll start with the edge. We'll stain the edge like this. And then I wipe the stain off with just a paper towel. You can use a, any kind of a cloth or anything like that, a cotton cloth, but I have found that a paper towel works really well and you just throw them away. So anyway, we'll finish staining this. Again, like I say, I do my edges first. Okay, we load up the sponge and we put our stain on. Now, down in the profiles, I like to get a little brush and work the stain down into the groove like that. Make sure I get my stain all the way through on my groove. And then back again with my paper towel to wipe and clean up. back with more stain on the inside. Then 
Your little brush works great for the inside of a panel profile to make sure that your stain gets underneath your style and rail set so you don't end up with a white line ever. And by using this little brush and technique in here, I never have that problem because it gets a little stain up underneath the style and rail and I don't have that problem. And again, like I say, wipe it out with our paper towel. And then we'll finish the face of our style and rail last. Sherwood wiping stain, the directions say let dry an hour, and an hour is always usually pretty good. I don't have any problem with that unless it's a humid day. And so we'll put that on our drying rack, we'll let it dry, then we'll seal it and glaze it, and we'll show you how we do that too. sealer coat, now we'll sand it and glaze it. And I sand with just a sanding sponge. I like a, this size sanding sponge right here. I use the fine sanding sponge. Sands the lacquer real well and it gets into the profiles. That's the thing I like about it. We just did a piece of sandpaper. So we're going to go ahead and sand this, then we'll glaze. We've sanded our door, we're getting ready to glaze, and we glaze the same way that we stained. We'll start with the edges first. I have my brush to put my glaze on, that's the way I apply my glaze, and I wipe it off with a paper towel. So that's the way we'll do it here. So let's start with our, and we just put it on nice and thick, like that. Get down into the profile, good. And what you want to do with your glaze is you want your profiles to be highlighted. So you want to wipe off your glaze, but you want to leave a little glaze in the profile like that. Now I got too much in the little channel there, so we'll wipe some of that out. But that's how we want our glaze to look all the way around the door. And then we'll work on the inside. But we'll do the edges first. So we'll just continue to work our way around the edges. I like an oil-based glaze. They have glaze that is water-based and oil and glaze that is oil-based. I like the oil-based glaze because it doesn't dry quite as fast and it gives me a chance to wipe it up and clean it up a little better before it starts drying on me too fast. And the water-based glaze sometimes, depending upon the size of your door or project that you're working on, the water-based glaze sometimes dries too fast. The oil-based glaze allows me a little more time to complete my cleanup. And that's just a personal preference. Try both kinds, see which kind you like the best, but I like the oil-based best. got our outside done, then I do my inside, and then I do the face of my style and rails last. So now we'll do the inside profile. Just keep working. 
working it until you get even. And glaze sometimes looks a little messy when you get all done, but that's just kind of the way it looks. It doesn't have crisp lines. It doesn't, isn't made to be that way. On our stain and glaze door, our glaze is now dry. Our door is ready to spray. Now we have stain, seal, glaze, and now we'll put two coats of top coat. I do my two coats of top coat all at the same time. I spray my edges, then I spray one way, and then I spray the other way, and that gives me the equivalent of two coats and makes a really nice finish. We'll show you that now. Getting ready to do our mahogany door now, our mahogany drawer face with our Minwax stain. Again, we will be applying our stain with a staining sponge. Um, like I say, I get these from Harbor Freight, they're just great. We'll stain our edges first, then the inside of our panel and our style and rail face. So watch as we do that and we'll show you how I do that. So first thing first, edge. I apply my stain and wipe up with paper towel. After I do the edges, I do my panel. And you go around the inside of the panel, get the in profile of the style and rail. I like to wipe my stain on in a circular motion because that drives the stain into the grain of the wood, brings out the richness of the wood. And then I have a little brush and I use the little brush to make sure I get the stain in the corners and underneath the style and rail set so that it kind of bleeds back in there, or not bleeds back, but gets wiped back underneath there. And if the panel shrinks a little bit, I never have a white line showing by taking my little brush and do that. And then I go back with my paper towel and wipe up my stain. Get all of that excess stain off. Make it nice and clean. It really brings out the grain of the wood. Mahogany is a beautiful wood. Red color matches the antique table that we're using, or that we're matching. I don't know that I would say that it's my favorite color, but it looks great on mahogany and it matched the table beautifully. And so when we get all done, we're going to have a beautiful buffet to match this beautiful mahogany antique table. Okay, there's our mahogany drawer face. All right, we're getting ready to top coat our stained mahogany doors. There we are, all finished staining. And we're just, again, just use a cup gun. We're using a lacquer. Now just use a pre-catalyzed lacquer. All right. We have completed the stain and two coats of lacquer on our mahogany door. We're going to sand it now and get ready to spray our final coat and then we'll have a nice new uh, smooth finish. We already have a nice finish already, but we want the extra protection of that final coat. And like I say, I just use a sanding sponge. I, I like to use one that is a little worn for my final sand so that it gives me a smoother final coat. And I sand the faces. Just scrub it down real good, sand my profile, sand
sand my panel. I try to sand with the grain wherever possible. And then I always sand my edges too. And you rough up a finish like this, sand a little bit, that helps your new coat stick better. So now we're ready to spray our final coat of lacquer on our mahogany door. Okay, we're getting ready to do our paint in our paint shop now on our paint grade doors. This is the paint we showed you in our door. And I just use a cup gun. That's what I use when I spray. I spray my lacquer with it. I spray my paint with it. They're very inexpensive. I just buy this from the big box hardware stores. They work great. I get a good finish with them. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to be turning on the spray booth, the, the, uh, the exhaust fan. And so it's going to be very noisy. We're going to shut the sound off on our video. And we're just going to spray the doors. We have four or five doors to spray. And so we're going to do that now. Okay, we're back on our white door. We have sprayed three coats of white paint. And if you have ever painted white doors, and as you begin to paint white doors, one of the things that you'll find is that your first coat of white paint exposes any inconsistencies in your sanding. And sanding is always a very important part of your finish. How good your finish is is, how, is a, based a lot on how good you did your sanding. Well, we had a few inconsistencies in our sanding, but the nice thing about white paint is I go back and I just take some lightweight spackle and I just wipe spackle in the spots that need to be filled and then I sand again and give another coat and that fills my inconsistencies. And so we have sanded, or done three coats like I say, and we're getting ready to sand. You can see here I've started to sand. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and finish our sand for our final coat of white paint. Then we're gonna spray white paint and then we'll come back and spray two coats of clear, toe, clear coat on top, top coat. And then our door will be done and it will look perfect. So there we are, all sanded. Okay. It's a little noisy in the paint shop because we have the fan going, but we're just going to rough up this final coat of white paint before we spray on our top coat. So we're just going to lightly sand it, knock off any bumps or anything like that so that we have a real smooth surface for our top coat. We'll also blow it off and get any dust off. Now we're ready to spray our top coat. Thank you for watching our finished video. This was our mahogany doors. We just showed you one, but I had a whole job that I was doing. Same with my white. I have a vanity that I'm doing here. This goes to a piece of furniture. And then here's our little sample of our stain and glaze. But you can see how being able to do finish, multiple different kinds of finish, really helps you in the cabinet shop. We look forward to seeing you again, and we're gonna do another video on finish that has a little more information but this is the ones that we use most of the time. This is a pretty standard view of the kind of finishes we do in the cabinet shop. So we'll look forward to seeing you next time on Woodworking with Wes.